Welcome to today's lesson, where we shall be continuing with our discussion on elements of scientific research. And in case you are finding these videos helpful, please subscribe and like this video to help the channel grow. In our third video, we started by introducing two elements of scientific research. We discussed concepts and constructs. In our fourth video, we discussed about types of variables, where we say there are three main types of variables, that is, independent and dependent variables, confounding variables, and moderating variables. And today, we shall discuss our fourth element, which is the research problem. Before we dive into today's lesson, let us first look at our learning outcomes. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to define research, outline at least three sources, and learn how to formulate a research problem. We shall also discuss about a research topic and its qualities. Now let us begin by looking at our first objective, which is a research problem. Remember in our first lesson, we explained why we conduct research, and we said research is search for knowledge, and we asked ourselves, why are we searching for knowledge? And we said, we are searching for knowledge to fill a gap which we call the research problem. So today, we are going further to discuss this element called research problem. A research problem is therefore an area of concern. It is a gap that causes a discomfort, and this is a discomfort to a researcher when he or she asks the question, why? In other words, we are saying that a research problem is the why of the study. We can also define a research problem as a discrepancy or a deviation between the ideal and actual whose solution can only be arrived at through research. Remember in our first video we said a research problem is a gap between what is and what ought to be. A research problem is what the researcher is interested in finding out or studying. It can also be defined as an area of concern, a condition to be improved, or a difficulty to be eliminated. By definition, a research problem is an intellectual challenge or a question of interest which can be answered through collection, analysis, and interpretation of data. Now let's look at the sources of a research problem and let's start with number one which, which is personal interest and experience. And obviously the starting point of identifying a research problem is always what we experience in the empirical world. For example, you are seeing a group of students who are using cigarettes. Suddenly it strikes your mind that you are going to conduct a research on use of drugs among college students. Through using your personal experience, you have got a research problem. Number two, use of intellectual curiosity. One can ask oneself, how, why, and so on. For example, you are a nurse and you realized that presence of a husband in, in a labor room helps to reduce labor pain and anxiety of the pregnant woman. So you as a nurse, you decide to carry out a research regarding this problem. Therefore, your intellectual curiosity has become a rich source of a research problem. Number three, using prior research done by other researchers in case there are recommendations given for further studies. Because in any library where you find a research project, the last chapter of a project is always a suggestion of further research. That area may be a source that you may pick and develop a research problem. Number four, during evaluation of a specific program, one can identify a gap which needs research. For example, you are part of a team which is distributing mosquito nets to a certain area. But while you are carrying out the program, you realize there is low uptake of mosquito nets in such an area. Therefore, during the evaluation of that program, you have gotten a research problem. Then number five, through direct observation of a current need in your community. So this is self-explanatory whereby you see a problem in your community and you want to solve it and you realize that reaching on a solution, you need to first do research. Therefore, through direct observation of a current need in your community, that becomes a source of a research problem. Other sources of research problems include media, uh, existing literature, 
replication but not duplication and also having discussions with experts. Remember, research isn't about hearsay. It must be anchored on data. Even when we use our sources as we have talked about above, you must then go to literature and anchor our problems on data. Now, let's have an example of a research problem. A researcher may ask questions like the following. What is the cause of cholera outbreak among people in Katanga? In this case, the researcher is interested in studying or finding out the cause of the cholera outbreak among people in Katanga. So, how do we formulate this problem? We can formulate it as, in recent years, Katanga has experienced recurrent cholera outbreaks leading to causes of illnesses and fatalities. While cholera is a well-known waterborne disease, the specific contributing factors and mechanisms responsible for these outbreaks remain poorly understood. You see how the problem has been formulated. It leaves a question. It leaves a gap, right? Let's look at another example. Which age group is most affected by malaria in Murago? Here we see that the researcher is interested in finding out which age group is mostly affected by malaria in Murago. So, we can formulate our research problem as, in Murago, malaria continues to be a significant health concern, yet there is limited information on which specific age groups are most vulnerable to this disease. You see that the research problem is having that gap. And here the gap we see it is the limited information on specific age groups. Note that it is important to mention the study area, the population affected, and also the problem in that study area. Now, let's look at the qualities or characteristics of a research problem. And for the qualities, we use an acronym, FINA. F which is feasible, it means that a research problem is supposed to be researchable in terms of, of course, time and respondents. Feasible can also mean doable. I stands for interesting. Interesting meaning it should be interesting enough to overcome the many hurdles and frustrations of a research process. For example, if a research problem is in your area, it is going to be interesting because you already have knowledge about the problem. N stands for novel or novel, which practically means that the research problem is not too common. Therefore, we expect to get some new information. So it should be one which is not too common or has already been researched on. E stands for ethical. For example, the study should not pose physical risks to respondents or invasion of their privacy. Therefore, we mean that whenever you're carrying out your research, you're supposed to follow ethical rules of research. R stands for relevant or significant to the society. Here you are considering how your results might be of help to the study area. So whenever you're carrying out research, how useful are the results you are going to obtain through carrying out your research. These are the five qualities of a good research problem. It is also important to note that the above qualities also apply to a research topic. And also don't forget that the research problem is supposed to be brief to capture the reader's attention. Now let's look at the steps involved formulating a research problem. Our first step is to identify a broad field or a subject area of interest to you. And now, in this broad field, we are going to go with non-communicable diseases. Our step two is, is to dissect the broad area into sub-areas. So, under non-communicable diseases, we can have diabetic mellitus, we can have hypertension, and very many others. Then we go to our step three, where we are supposed to select what is most interest to us. And among our sub-areas, let us go with diabetes mellitus. Our last step is to raise research questions. Here we are going to define our problem whereby we are going to also create our research topic, its aim and also the objectives. Now we are going to go deeper into a research topic which is our next objective. Now what is a research topic? By definition a research topic is the statement that clearly and concisely expresses what the researcher is interested in studying. 
it is not very different from a research problem. How? Because of the qualities. We already talked about the qualities in the form of finer, and all those qualities from a research problem are going to apply to a research topic, although a research topic has more than finer only, as we are going to look at. Now let's look at them. We already talked about feasible as number one. We talked about interesting, novel, ethical, and relevant. To add more on the qualities of a research topic, a research topic is supposed to be specific. How? We talked about non-communicable diseases, which means you will not only talk about non-communicable diseases, but you will choose a specific area. For example, diabetic mellitus. Another example, you cannot talk about chronic diseases as a research problem. That means you need to dissect and choose one chronic illness, for example, asthma. A research topic is supposed to be up to date. For UNIMEB, a research problem is not supposed to be older than 10 years. For example, you cannot have a research topic about schizostomiasis or bilharzia. These are conditions which are 10 years older. Number seven, your research topic is supposed to be up to date, not older than 10 years. Number eight, it is supposed to have a study area. For example, a hospital, it can be a village, it can be a school or an institution. Number nine, it is supposed to be clearly and concisely stated. It is supposed to be appropriately worded. It is not supposed to exceed 20 words. Another quality, it is supposed to show both the independent and the dependent variable. Let's dissect one topic so that we look at all these qualities. Our topic of today is factors affecting utilization of diabetic screening services among patients attending PG Health Center for Chilingenten Parish, PG District. Our independent variable is factors affecting utilization of diabetic screening services. Our dependent variable is diabetic screening services. Our target population is patients attending PG Health Center. Our study area is PG Health Center for Chiringenten Parish, PG District. Our study area is PG Health Center for Chiringenten Parish, PG District. Now we have our question that we need to ask ourselves. Is the topic above having the characteristics of a good research topic? Let's find out. Is it feasible? And we say yes, because our topic is feasible and researchable as it involves investigating the factors affecting the utilization of diabetic screening services among patients attending PG Health Center. Four. Another question, is our topic interesting? Yes, the topic is interesting because it is in the field of nursing. Another question, is our topic novel? Yes, because there could still be new information or perspectives to uncover. Is our topic ethical? Yes, as long as the research is conducted with the proper informed consent. Another question, is our topic relevant to the society? We say yes, this topic is relevant as it addresses the utilization of healthcare services for a specific. And the last question is, is our topic up to date? We say obviously yes, because people are currently still having issues with diabetes. So we have come to the end of our lesson today. And in our next lesson, we shall talk about research objectives. Please subscribe and like this video if you're finding this information helpful. We meet in the next video. Bye.